We all 18, 18. We all 18, 18. All about the semis. We all 18, 18. All about the semis. We all 18, 18, baby. All about the semis. We all 18. What up, y'all? You know who it is? It's your boy QDJ Double E's another episode about semis. How about you, driver? Man, man, man. Out here rolling. I dropped my load this morning uh, in Tampa. Still in the south. Still in the south. However, I was fortunate to get another load, y'all, coming um, back north and towards uh, North Florida. Um... Four dollar mile load, man. Um, it was actually supposed to deliver straight through at like three thirty, but I, I mean at three o'clock. No, can't even get my can't even get my imp together. It was supposed to deliver at um, by four. Well, I picked it up at like about uh, twelve. By the time they got got it loaded, it was low at the one. So I was on my way. I was going to take it straight through because they said I could take it straight through. But um, by the time I got like midway, it was like 3.30 and it said, I, I mean, three o'clock and it said I'd get there about 3.30 and I ain't want to go and push the envelope. So I decided to bring it on in uh, to the truck stop and just shut down early, man. You know, shut down about two, uh, about three o'clock and, and shut it down. So, you know, because y'all know I, I trip plan, I trip plan and I planned it out that. I would probably be right around this truck stop at three, which I was, and I, I just didn't want to do that, man. And not not that it would be a little considerate too, provided the broker gave me the right information. I didn't want to show up at four, almost four o'clock, thirty minutes before to bring them a truck that they need to unload, and those people want to go home. And it wasn't no rush because this load was really an extra load, so I was able to squeeze in an extra five hundo. For 120 miles and get it done. I said, I'll sit on this. So instead of taking it early, I could shut down, watch some TV, catch up on some movies, binge watch a few things. So I said, you know what? Why well, take it early? Fuck that. I'm going to sit on it. And that's Buck with a B. B U C K. Fuck that, man. So. I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy some of this time, man. It is beautiful out here, man. Oh, I mean, I, I don't know what is up with this weather, man, but check this out. Look at these cows. They back there chilling in the back. Like, I mean, look at them bulls. Mm. Somebody smell the beef? I know y'all say you over here tripping, man. But you know, nonetheless, I'm good. Everything's good. The weather, truckers out here, good. Everybody, everybody, I just seem to be minding their own business so today's video man what are we talking about today what are we talking about the day we just talk about um actually it i actually do have a topic for y'all man um dealing in um you know these rates i was going to do some um stuff when you need to check out on your truck right uh, but that video is going to come next when you're buying a truck and uh particularly DD-15s and things to look for because um, I like to show hands-on stuff when what you actually can see it when it needs it versus when people tell you oh just look for this look for that but when you see it and you see why you need to look for it it, it hits different you know what I'm saying it, it totally hits different so I'm trying to drink my coffee y'all and um whatever hold this camera but you know, with this kind of market, y'all, when it comes to booking, one of the key strategies is knowing those areas to be in, man. And if you get stuck in the wrong area, like hence me, um, it's a little tough to get out of here sometimes, you know, in these particular areas. So what you need to know is if you're going to get stuck somewhere, at least get stuck close to another good area so you don't have to deadhead as far right and that way you, you're not burning up a lot of time to um to get 
to the Munions. So um, I always try and plan it out in that situation. Now, if your home time or home area, rather, is an area that's just a bad area, like in my case, I'm out of Florida. So Florida is just what it is. You know, it is just what it is. But what about those people that's like in like Montana, you know, um, way out there in the outskirts of like Idaho and, you know, those kind of things. This is where the seasonal region. And I know some of you guys might not want to step away from your home base or comfort zone, but I'm really speaking to my real drivers and my real owner operators out there that are really trying to, you know, get at this this money to make it work. So, you know, my strategy is always I'm going to run as close as possible where the highest rates are. How do I find the highest rates, QDZ? Well, I'm glad you asked. You know, there's certain ways you can do this now for my own operator guys, for my uh, people that can book their own loads. There's multiple ways you can do that. Um, you go on some of these boards that if you can get access to the boards, just put the uh, put the you know, for starters, put the um, put the uh, areas in that you want to that you're interested in. Look up those look up those um, areas and see what those areas are for that time of the season that you're in. And you'll notice a dramatic change in rates per area. Now, how do I make that work? Well, now this is where you, you start learning how you're gonna book your truck or run your truck. You know, um, there was a time where I would leave Florida, go into Savannah, book out of Savannah, and I would do a, a pyramid or diamond run or triangle triangle shaped run to uh, make the most or maximize my revenue. Or I would go out and stay out in that area, run that area for a week, kind of like I did when I went out west. I stayed out there for a week, you know, made me about five or six grand. And then I decided to go ahead and bring it back in. So there's a lot of ways that you can go about doing it. The key is wherever you land, you want that area that you land in to be a decent area so that way because sometimes sometimes it's not that the freight is not um the rates are not good sometimes certain areas don't have the volume there's not a lot of volume of freight coming out and i have heard uh guys that have been dealing with that you know that man it's like man it's not nothing coming out of here this is why it's important to have some kind of a load board um system um I'll, I'll just use DAT because DAT is a good one on the desktop version. I think that package you pay for is like 60 bucks and you can actually look and it will show you what, how much, how many trucks going in versus how many trucks coming out. It shows you that on a chart, like real time live. It's crazy. So that way, I already know I don't even want to go in this area because I got 300 loads coming out, but it's it's 600 trucks sitting over there right now. Yeah, D, D, uh, DAT tells you that. So a lot of people don't want to pay for the extra features, but sometimes you got to pay. And sometimes paying that extra money will save you a lot of money in the long run because Somewhere that you ain't got a deadhead from, well, that's a, sa a savings right there if you don't even need to go that route in the first place. So you got to figure out where that value is to you. There are some other load boards, but DAT is one of the ones I actually know that has like a whole booking suite that you can actually look and see the freight and from every state. Um, I think, I don't know if I still got it. I might, I do got a DAT account, but I, I downgraded my account. Um, for what I need, but I haven't went on, I haven't went on um, on my laptop and looked at it. And I think if I do it from the laptop, it might still give me that feature. So if I can, I will show you guys what I mean by that. But I think that's a real powerful tool to have because sometimes, you know, it's not about um, knowing um, 
everything. It's just about trying to know where to get the information from. And that's why we're here, right? That's why we have, you know, this platform so that we can find the information that we need to have. So when I'm booking, um, like, I'm, like I'm stuck here now, right? And I, I'm not technically stuck because, like I said, there was freight coming out, but it's not freight that I'm willing to take. But when I'm booking, I'm always looking ahead. I'm, and I'm booking ahead. You know, sometimes two loads or more. I used to book my whole week out, but then I kind of started scaling back from that because all it takes is one mess up. And if anybody knows anything, y'all know one person cancel on you, it'll snowball your whole week. So I can recover from one more load being booked, but I try not to go more than, um, you know, two loads at a time. I used to do three, four, two loads at a time because it's easier to, to restructure, regroup, and replan, reroute, and keep it pushing. You understand what I'm smearing? You under smear? So the other thing is, again, guys, like I always say, know those areas. Know those areas where um, you want to be at in a certain season. Like right now, reefers are doing good in Florida, believe it or not. It's the dry vans that's really hurting. But reefers are doing good. This is plant season. I keep getting offered a lot of plant loads. I keep getting offers like some produce loads, watermelons and stuff are gonna start popping off real, real soon. That stuff's gonna start doing good out here. I mean, as you can see right now, this weather out here, I mean, look, I had to roll my sleeves up because I was, I mean, it's, it's, it's nice out here, man. The sun is shining. This is the time where you can see over there on the other side, it's freezing on the other side of the globe right now. So Florida's getting ready to do real good on this um, produce side, flowering side, produce side, gardening stuff is about to start popping off. And what comes along with that, your places like Home Depot and Lowe's, they're starting to get ready for the, um, the gardening season. So you're going to start seeing a lot of um, um, outdoor furniture and things are going to start being moved. We're going to start seeing a lot of furniture loads coming from this way. But... Um, that's still a little bit ways down for that stuff, but it is coming. But right now, plants and stuff is coming. And I hate plants. I've been getting offered pretty good paying plant loads out of Florida. I'm talking about pretty decent, but I stopped doing them. I don't like to do them daggone plant loads because they tear my trailer up because they floor load everything and all that dirt and that wet mud. And it, it's, it'd be all over the trailer. And trying to push that with a, a broom, that wet mud, I, do I need to keep going with this? You know what I'm saying? So I stop because not only that, when you get to your receivers and sometimes even the shippers, it takes them so long because they load each little individual plant on the floor and it just, it, it'll really eat up your time by the time you look at the rate and then you might have to fight for your detention time. So I stopped doing those. Um, actually, when I left Landstar, I stopped doing that. I think I might've did one, since I've been on to my own and that was the last one I did. So if you can get some that are um, stacked on uh, pallets, have at it, you know, but they do pay good um, during the uh, summer season. Those plant loads do pay good. Now, if they step their bread up a little bit, I just might, I just might go ahead and jump on that. But for right now, Nizal, Nizal, y'all, Nizal. So we had 13 minutes, y'all. I didn't really want to make this real long. I just kind of wanted to throw a quick few nuggets on there about how I book. And really, I can go a little bit more deeper and more in depth with it, and I will. But um, I just want to, you know, give y'all something. I got some uh, actual truck stuff coming up for the next uh, few videos. Uh, I'm going to actually be giving you guys some reviews of some trucks. So. I'm telling you, I got some stuff coming. I'm just doing a lot of edits. You can see you guys, I'm changing up a lot of my, my stuff. I'm going to redo the, uh, the the intro again. So that way it's, you know, try, we're trying to change it throughout the year. So, or at least twice a year or something like that. Once or twice a year. So it's new year. We're going to go ahead and flip up, the, flip up the images on that stuff. Already got the music. And yes, I make my own um, music. So all the stuff you guys here on my channel are listening to now, as of now, I'm making. And um, part of that reason is because uh, YouTube has kind of been screwing me out of um, uh, my monetization because, you know, 
when you use other people's music, they don't want to pay you. And it's like one minute they tell you it's, it's cool. That's a whole nother thing in itself. And then the next minute it's not. So I said, you know what? From this point on, I'm making my own music. Uh, I actually got um, studio equipment because I used to make beats. So yeah, got a lot of little stuff up my, up my sleeve y'all ain't know about. So now I'm making my own music, doing my own thing concerning the channel. And um, I hope you guys enjoy. Anything you want to hear about, see about, let me know, and I will add it on the list. It's your boy Pete Easy Double Easy. Now that was all I said. I. How about you out there, Later.